This is amazing. The FDA is looking right now at an additive in soda in, you, in the U.S. that I guess it smooths out the, um, the, the sourness or the, the, the some quality, the tanginess of uh, soda. It is an ingredient that uh, is used in the citrus flavored sodas. It is a version of a modified vegetable oil known as BVO. And there are toxology uh, studies that have basically made it impossible. Bromide vegetable oil, oil in rats, they did a test and it ain't good. It's been used as an emulsifying agent since 1930s to ensure that citrus flavor agents uh, don't float to the top of sodas. It um, has all sorts of, uh, of, of detrimental uh, health effects. In the 50s, the agency regarded the ingredient as generally recognized as safe. Um, there have been a decade of, of questions about it. In the UK, in the 70s, they found that bromine was building up in human tissues. This has been coming for a long time. But uh, here is uh, Fox News outraged over the fact that in Denver, they're proposing getting rid of uh, soda off the school menus. There, nothing could be like it's just sugar water yeah. and like what purpose does it serve for it to be in there but this is an Addicting assault on freedom yeah here we go <laughs> well another proposed ban that could be equally unpopular sodas in schools across denver advocates say it's a one uh one way to get a handle on skyrocketing childhood obesity rates kennedy is the host of kennedy saves the world podcast mm. and she never has an opinion on anything <laughs> no i i say um we tie the children up we put them back in their rooms we zoom in a room and control everything they put in their bodies everything uh. they see in interface with um these bands tend not to work they usually end up i got news for you these bands tend not to work here's what happens if you don't sell or make available in school soda the kids will not drink soda in school yeah that's what happens that's not there's no tendency there smuggling in a six pack of cokes <laughs> in fact these type of bands to the extent that she's talking about no they may bring in their own soda uh, yeah on the margins it's going to have yeah, a pretty big effect yes. though well I, I mean we've seen it in this uh they banned in new york city about i don't know 15 20 years ago uh type of like um the plastic fat that was in uh you know uh french fries and, th and these same people cried about that I'm sorry, like I nobody remember. cares. They 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 increased the taxes on cigarettes and less people smoke. Y yeah. You know what happened when my elementary school put a Fruitopia machine in the lobby is I started buying a lot of Fruitopia and drinking it. Of course. <laughs> this is the dumbest <laughs> it tends not it's to not work. Like we're you know what? Everything. First off, if it tended not to work, what would be your beef about it? Right. I mean, we can control the constitutional it. right to have soda in public schools. In Kennedy's sarcasm, she should also include, and we're going to tell them which books they can't take out from yeah, the library. Exactly. Isn't <laughs> like stopping Grand Theft Auto from coming to market? It's saying you can't sell soda in our public school, which exactly. shouldn't be allowed in the first place. No way. Um, these bans tend not to work. They usually end up in kids ingesting more calories and more sodas because they become so hyper obsessed with it. And I there's one city council member so. saying, this is just a nudge. This is just a nudge yes, for this parents. This is Councilman Chris Hines. He says, we're not taking the freedom of choice from families. Should a parent want their child to have soda, orange juice, or any other sugary beverage, that is their right. We're only nudging the default choice to be a healthy one. Oh, what a 
doesn't so work. Much. No, but th that's the problem is cities like this, uh, they have the idea that government has to parent for them. Mm -hmm. The parents are not to be trusted. It's incredibly offensive. And, well, you know, uh, pause for one second. I just want to tell people because you might get the wrong impression. But soda machines do not naturally occur in schools. <laughs> There has to be an affirmative decision. We're either going to put this machine in there or we're not. It's not like, look, left to their own devices, the soda machines would exist in the schools. I'm going to go sell pot at the elementary school and just say it's for, hey, you don't trust parents? Come on. The kids won't buy it. Listen, if we don't sell it at school, the kids are going to get obsessed by it and try it afterwards. Uh, mm. I'm actually saving them. <laughs> go ahead. Parents are not to be trusted. It's incredibly offensive. And, you know, we have seen this massive pushback from non-political parents, particularly about anything to do I with schools, so. having seen what their children were subjected to during the pandemic. So parents are much more skeptical of this. No one wants obese children. No one wants children to have chronic conditions like mm -hmm. diabetes Pepsi and cardiovascular donuts. disease. No one wants this, but they also don't want heavy handed government because a nudge at some point turns into a headlock. By the way. Oh. Oh, yes. God. We're going to force you to not drink soda. We're instituting a, uh, you got to pee in the cup when you come into school. And if we see any, um, any evidence that you've drank soda, it's so insane. And you know what? Like th this type of stuff, when they get to this type of stuff, they're in real, they're, they're like, they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. You got to go all the way to Denver to find a uh, school system that is not going to include soda machines in it, and it's going to be an entire segment. The headlock of there's no longer a Coke machine. Yeah, uh, by the gym. <laughs> Alluda continua. Like, well, let's put cigarette machines back in school. Exactly. Exactly. You don't trust parents. What's the matter? Let's put cigarettes in the meal plan. Yeah. I'm trying to parent my kids. But do you know what the amazing thing to me about that is? It's just like, she can't possibly believe that. No, she is tired of being the lib or the lefty person. On oh, Fox no, News. she's never been that. Isn't she's always a... been the libertarian. Okay, well, I mean, like, relative to the right wingers she's surrounded by, where she has to say, like, hey, maybe, like, we're... No, no, this is all movement. perfectly yeah. consistent with her, you know, faux libertarianism. It's right. just that it's... It's also faux. There's no way a certain yeah. human being could go in and make this argument. It's unbelievable. Yeah, she's very much like personal choice about like everything under the sun, and like that she has, like, as you said. And it's but it's funny. It's like it's funny that she the the pipeline from her being like a VJ on on MTV to what this is now. <laughs> Just have there should be a vending machine for uh, puberty blockers uh, down there too. <laughs> exactly where. Let's put the condoms in the elementary school. Why are we putting them in a headlock?